Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Michael Soskel, and I am an elementary science teacher at the Wallenpaulbeck Area School District. Thank you for joining me to play the Five Blue Challenge. Even though we have to stay home right now, it doesn't mean that we can't travel the world to learn about incredible places, amazing animals, new cultures, and interesting people. Each time we are together, I am going to take you on a virtual field trip to a new place so that we can learn together from the people who live there. But before we travel, you will have to guess where we're going. I'll give you five clues, and we'll see how quickly you can figure it out. Are you ready to explore with me? Do you want to know where we're going today? Let's play. Today's mystery location is a country. I'm going to give you five clues. After each clue, I'm going to pause, I'm going to share a little bit of information, and I want you to take a guess. If you have a pad and a pencil or a pen at home, Go ahead and write down your guess after each clue, and we'll see how quickly you can come up with the answer. Your first clue is that the country we're going to be visiting today is located in the Northern Hemisphere. So what does that mean, Northern Hemisphere? Well, if we think of the Earth being like this soccer ball, the globe is a sphere. Hemisphere means half of that sphere. So the North Pole is on the top of the Earth. And everywhere on the top half of the Earth is considered the Northern Hemisphere. So the imaginary line that runs right around the middle is called the equator. Everything north of the equator is in that Northern Hemisphere. Now, of course, the Earth does not stand straight up like this. It actually has a tilt, so the North Pole is actually on an angle. This is what causes our seasons. When we in the Northern Hemisphere are pointed toward the sun, that's summertime. When we're pointed away from the sun, that's wintertime. And this happens every year as the Earth goes around the sun. So because we are in the Northern Hemisphere, and the country that we're going to be visiting today is in the Northern Hemisphere, when it's summertime for us, it's also summertime for them. And right now, while it's spring, it's also going to be spring where we're visiting. Have you come up with a guess yet? Have you written down a country? Your second clue is that the country we are visiting today is an archipelago. Now that's a big word. Do you know what it means? It means that the country we're visiting is a group of islands. In fact, it has over 700 different islands that make up this country. And those islands are spread out through the ocean. They cover almost 100,000 square miles. That's a lot of area. But the land is not nearly as big because the islands are small compared to the ocean area that they take up. Now, I wonder what it would be like to live in a country that was mostly islands. You wouldn't be able to take the train from one place to another the way you could in some places in the United States, or even to drive from one city to another. I wonder what kinds of food they eat, or if they eat a lot of fish there. Maybe those are some questions that we can ask our special guests that we're going to be talking with later. Have you come up with an answer yet? Have you thought of countries that are made up of islands? Maybe you've got it. Your third clue is that this country boasts that they have some of the clearest water in the entire world. That means if you're at the beach and you're in the ocean up to your neck and you look down, you can see straight through to your toes. In fact, the water around the islands in this country is so clear that people from all over the world travel there to go snorkeling and scuba diving. Because when you're in the water, you can see all of the different fish that live there. And because this country is in the tropics, there are coral reefs. And you can imagine the amazing sea creatures that live around coral reefs. There are mollusks like uh, squid and octopus that live there. There are echinoderms like starfish and sand dollars that live in the ocean near there. And lots of different vertebrates like fish. Have you thought of the place that we're talking about? Can you think of an island or a group of islands with really clear water in the Northern Hemisphere? If so, write down your guess. Let's see if you've got it. Your fourth clue is all about history. The country that we're visiting today has a long and amazing history. Originally, just like other places in the Caribbean, it was inhabited by the Taino people before Europeans arrived. In the 1600s, pirates like Blackbeard and Calico Jack 
looted cargo ships as they traveled around trading goods around these islands. It makes me think of the movies Pirates in the Caribbean. But this country only got its independence from Great Britain in 1973. That's a really big clue. Have you figured it out yet? Write down your guess. It's time for your last clue. Your fifth and final clue is that the capital city of the country that we're visiting today is Nassau. And a lot of people like to go to this country on vacation. It has beautiful beaches, some of the longest coral reefs in the world, and it has incredible underwater caves that you could explore. Because parts of this country are less than 100 miles from the United States state of Florida, lots of cruise ships stop here. Have you figured it out yet? If you guessed that today we are visiting the Bahamas, you're correct. Today we're going to visit a friend of mine, Jillian Morris. Jillian is a marine biologist, she's a scuba diver, she's a world-renowned explorer, and she's a shark conservationist. She lives and works on the island of Bimini, which is part of the Bahamas. Let's see what we can learn from her. Hi, Jillian. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. So we've talked so many times before, and I see the picture behind you, and there's some really scary-looking sharks behind you. Um, I know that you're a shark enthusiast. Are you ever scared? I'm not. I mean, I've spent uh, about 18 years working with these animals all over the world, from really little sharks to much bigger sharks. And believe it or not, these are kind of teenage lemon sharks. So they're going to get a lot bigger than what you see here. And I'm always just really amazed by sharks and, and have a lot of respect for them. They're really, really important animals. And today, that's what I want to talk to you about, is why sharks are so important for uh, ocean ecosystems, the food chain, uh, and the amazing work that they do to keep our oceans healthy and clean. That's really exciting because we just learned that the Bahamas has some of the clearest water in the entire world. So it must be really easy for you to see the sharks there. Absolutely. I mean, you can see in this photo, it's very easy to see sharks. And we have a lot of them, a lot of different species as well. And so uh, people travel from all over the world to swim with sharks, to study them. If you guys have watched TV shows on Discovery, Animal Planet, BBC, you've probably seen sharks in the Bahamas, maybe even some of these exact same sharks. Cool. We can't, I can't wait to learn more. So I'm just going to share my screen, show you guys a few photos and videos. There are over 500 different species of shark, and you might have a few that pop to mind or kind of a shape they look like. These are all sharks, and they're all very, very different. Um, as you look, this is just a few, um, and you notice right away that they don't all look like that top one in the middle, the great white, probably the most famous of all the sharks. Uh, so they do come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, they have different sort of methods for eating, which I'll talk a little bit about, but they also live in different habitats as well. So, and when I talk about sizes, there's sort of this idea that all of them are huge. A lot of sharks are really, really small. We can kind of look at the whale shark here, the biggest fish in the sea, it can be over longer than a school bus, about 45 feet long. Right? Kind of a fun activity if you're at home, measure that out and see how big 45 feet is. Then we have the pocket shark, about five and a half inches long, all right? That's as big as it gets, right? In every size in between. That shark on the left, he looks like he doesn't have any teeth. Ah, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay. They actually do have teeth. I know, it doesn't look like it because they're really tiny. Think about the tip of your pencil, but they actually do have teeth, right? And they do live in different habitats. So think of different places in the ocean that you might want to explore. Maybe you've seen coral reefs or the seagrass, underwater meadows, right? Think of your back lawn, all right? But it's underwater. Or what we have in the Bahamas are mangroves. These are an incredible ecosystem. See that top left? They're roots that have, they're right down in the ocean. 
So these plants can tolerate the salt water, but it makes great hiding places for lots of different fish, uh, baby sharks, baby turtle, even little lobsters like you see down on the right. Really, really. But all of these habitats are important for different animals. And all of these habitats have sharks. And no matter which habitat they're in, sharks are carnivores, right? They do eat other animals. There are no vegetarian sharks. Uh, there's one species that has a bit of seagrass that's been found in its stomach, but they don't really think that it's dining on the seagrass. It's probably eating something in the seagrass, and so it's getting some veggies uh, accidentally. Uh, which might happen to you if you're trying to avoid it on your plate and a piece of broccoli sneaks in there, all right? So sharks eat other animals, right? And they eat different animals. So sometimes you hear that sharks are mindless eating machines. They eat everything. They have favorite foods just like we do. And I'm betting that one of those foods that sharks eat is probably not people, right? Absolutely. You guys can rest assured we are not on the menu for sharks, all right? You might hear stuff, um, crazy movies, even on the news or the internet that there are monsters and man eaters. Absolutely not, all right? So everyone today watching can be a great shark scientist, right? So you're gonna ask questions, you're gonna make observations and share that information. And then when you hear crazy things like a monster or a man eater, you know, You've made your own observations, collected some data, and you know the truth about sharks. And then hopefully, you can share that with other people, right? Definitely not on the menu, right? So if you look here, tiger sharks, for example, they eat turtles, right? And what happens and why this is super important is not just that they, they eat turtles, it's, it's finding a balance. And if you guys can think of a scale, right? Nice and balanced and even. Sharks make sure that happens. Sure, managers, right? If you go to a restaurant or a store, a manager oversees and makes sure everybody's doing their job correctly. This is sort of the role that sharks play in the food chain, right? By eating other animals. And we do have different levels, right? And you may have talked about this, food chains and food webs on land. It's the same thing underwater, right? So plants, there are underwater plants. Um, that produce their own food. And then you have little things like even like those turtles, or if you can kind of see that bottom left image, the consumer is a dugong, which is kind of like a manatee that will graze on the grass, an underwater sea cow, kind of what people refer to them. All right, fish will eat different bits of algae or other fish. They also have some scavengers in there that sort of eat a bit of everything or things that are dying or dead. Sharks can play that role as well. Right, so they're super, super important. Uh, when I taught my fourth and fifth graders in my classroom, we would talk about producers and that most producers use energy from the sun to use photosynthesis to make their own food. But that there are some plants or some, some organisms in the ocean that actually use chemicals deep down in the sea where there's no light. Do sharks, uh, so I, I bet that sharks probably eat some of the things that eat those organisms also, right? Absolutely, we have deep sea sharks. Um, found thousands of feet below the surface, uh, different challenges, because think about life down there. You said there's no sunlight down there. Um, so we'll see sharks with different eye structures, their body is different, um, the way they move and what they feed on is different as well because, and how they get their food. Uh, just because life in the deep, dark parts of the ocean has a lot more challenges uh, to surviving uh, so they need to be equipped with some special tools for life at those very cool, deep parts of the ocean. So, and you might think, okay, so yeah, animals have a different place, but really they keep it balanced, as I mentioned, because when you remove sharks from an ecosystem, now all the food that they eat, their prey items, there's lots of them. It's like, woohoo, no predators. So their population goes up, but then there's not enough food. And that level disappears. And the next level, we'll actually start to see um, seagrass beds start to die, coral reefs start to die. Mm. That management position uh, is really important. And you may have heard the term apex predator. Yes, it's 
some sharks are on the top of the food chain, but even if they're not on the top, they're still eating other animals, they're still helping maintain that balance. They're also eating injured and sick fish, dying fish, keeps the ocean clean and keeps disease from spreading. And this is really, really important. Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's important for us to remember, no matter what animal or, or organism we're talking about, whether it's a plant or animal or a fungus, every organism plays its own role on Earth, right? And if we, and if we eliminate just one of those things, it messes up all of the different systems that we have here on Earth. And sharks definitely play their role in the ocean. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, they have these jobs that are really, really important. And it's why we want to protect our oceans, take care of these different ecosystems and habitats uh, so that these animals can continue to exist in these places and do their job, ultimately keeping the world healthy and balanced for all of us, which is really, really important. And part of that is this word, biodiversity. And if you look at these photos, you see a lot of different fish. Right? You see some sharks, corals, some kind of sea kelps, uh, different types of reef and ecosystem. But biodiversity means lots of different species, lots of different types of animals. And that management position, that job that sharks have, they're helping to maintain this. And like Michael mentioned, all of those animals have a special job. They have a place in that system. They play a role. And if we're missing a job, somebody else needs to fill it in. And that might not happen. There might not be somebody to fill that role in. And then you start seeing the systems become unbalanced. So a really important word that sharks help maintain. Just a little bit about feeding. So here's our friend, the whale shark again, um, and a basking shark at the top right, and then a tiger shark down in the bottom right. And tiger sharks have, you can see the teeth there, but the other two, you're probably going, wait, are there teeth? They do, they have very tiny little teeth, but they filter feed. The whale shark filters like a whale, um, really big. Wow. Uh, that's where they get their name. So do they eat the same thing as, as some whales, like the plankton and the, and the small little creatures? They do. They're a big underwater vacuum cleaner. They swim along with a mouth that can be up to three feet wide, uh, wow. sucking up, oh, yeah, big mouth sucking up lots of plankton. So if you think about it, the biggest fish in the sea has prey items that are the smallest, which I think is pretty cool. Shows you how awesome these animals are. Jillian, the shark ahead, that's, that's in the, oh, if you go back to shark that's in the top right, what kind of shark was that? So that's a basking shark, and they're uh, slightly smaller than the whale shark, but again, you see that mouth open, and you can actually see those gills down inside, another filter feeder. Um, swing oh. along. So when I look at that picture, it almost looks like you can see his skeleton, but that's his gills in there? That's the mouth inside and the openings to the gills, yeah, mm -hmm. as it's coming through, because the water is still filtering through for the shark to breathe. And then they have little special filaments that actually trap the food. So the water can pass through, the gills can get oxygen, and then those little filaments can actually trap the food and make sure it goes down into the stomach. Mm, that's really interesting. And the reason why I asked is because when I looked at that, I know that shark skeletons are not like our skeletons. We have really hard bones, but shark skeletons are actually made of the same stuff as like the tip of your nose and your ears, right? It's nice and flexible so they can get through the water. Absolutely. Cartilage, right? So a fun trivia question to ask your family, how many bones do sharks have? The answer is zero. Wow. Right? And they're going to be like, what? So yeah, fun question to ask everybody. Um, yeah, their, their skeleton is made of cartilage and it really it does help them move. They're very, very flexible and it weighs less than bone. So it's lighter for their movement in the water. Oh. We'll just look at some of our shark friends where we can actually see their toothy smile. And think about your lunch, right? If you're having soup, you're gonna use a spoon. If you're having uh, spaghetti, you might have a fork and a knife or use a spoon. 
right? But you're not gonna cut your sandwich up with that same spoon. Well, sharks don't need to pick their silverware. They have different shaped teeth, sort of built in. And they eat different things, right? So the nurse shark on the top left, tiny little teeth, they like to crush big snails called conch or lobster. There's a tiger shark at the bottom left, little notches like a knife. They can actually saw through a turtle shell. Bottom right is a lemon shark, kind of like a fork for grabbing at fish. And the top right, uh, if anyone's at home doing some baking, right, this guy would come in handy, the cookie cutter shark. Swims up, would be very helpful, swims up, it's a pretty small shark, about two feet long. Swims up to another animal, takes a little chunk out. Looks like somebody took a cookie cutter to the side. <laughs> so cool. different food, different shaped teeth. We kind of get the idea that top middle tooth you see there, that's a great white tooth. And that's what a lot of people think a shark tooth looks like. Maybe you've had a fossil tooth or something. But if you look, these are all teeth from different sharks and it kind of helps us solve what they might be eating. If we look at the different shapes and edging to them, it helps us figure out a lot of what their diet might look like. Because remember, they have favorite foods just like we do. And just a quick, how do they find their food? All right, we know they're important. We know they eat a lot of different things. Sharks have some pretty amazing sensory systems. Right? So they have the same five senses we do. They have some extra ones that help them. And I think the coolest one are these little black dots. They look like freckles. They're not. They're filled with a gel, like hair gel or jello. And they can feel the pulse from the heartbeat of an animal. This is sort of like a built-in metal detector, right? The shark is swimming along the bottom, but they're not looking for buried treasure or lost jewelry. They're looking for lunch. I wonder what it would be like to have extra senses. Wouldn't that be so cool? That would be amazing. And I mean, these guys have been around for over 400 million years. So these senses are how they survive. They're super powered and help them for challenging life in the ocean. And uh, say you're a stingray, right? You're hiding in the sand. You're pretty sure the shark can't see you or smell you. You're right. Shark doesn't see you, doesn't smell you, doesn't hear you. But when it gets close, it can feel your heartbeat. That metal detector dings and they have their lunch. Well, that is so cool, Jillian. Unfortunately, I think we're out of time, but thank you so much for taking us on a tour of the Bahamas and teaching us all about sharks today. That was so cool. Yeah, well, thank you guys for diving in with me and learning a little bit about why these awesome animals are so important for oceans around the world. Well, we I hope that you enjoyed today's trip as much as I did. Traveling is one of my favorite ways to learn. Already, I can't wait for our next adventure. Thank you for joining me at Learn at Home with VIA and for sharing this experience with me. Keep exploring. I'll see you again soon.